Insight Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the third podcast of the Insight Software Budgeting Podcast Series. I'm Heather McNeil, and today I'm joined with John Lovar and John Hilborn, our in-house budgeting gurus, who will help us understand current budgeting challenges and how we can improve that process. Today's podcast is titled, Moving Beyond Excel with Intelligent Integration. So I'm just going to dive in and ask John a question here. How do people budget with complex calculations today? Well, what you see in the environments today, at least uh, when I visit customer sites, budgeting and forecasting that involves complex equations is often found in some hidden spreadsheet somewhere in the system. Okay. So why is that the process? Unfortunately, the the tools that are available from a, an ERP platform perspective are very often sometimes too complicated, or at least for accountants who are involved in this process, aren't trained in the technical skills, don't know the technical table names and, and backgrounds that are required to assemble this information in uh, advanced tools that are provided by many of the ERP providers. So what they end up doing is using a tool that they're all familiar with, um, which is Excel or spreadsheets. And in those tools, they can do pretty much whatever they need. Uh, all the functions like what if, V lookups, those fancy calculations are available at their fingertips and they've all been trained how to use it. So that's where it, it typically resides. Got it. So what, what are those pain points that some of those people feel? At the end of the day, these calculations all result in some number that gets rolled into financials, and that number is fed into the system at some point, either uh, manually keyed in or uploaded. The problem is whenever you want to drill into that information and find out how it was derived, you need to go and find that and look at that calculation uh, that made it up, and that's going to be in that spreadsheet that most likely is on some individual user's desktop or maybe shared on some local drive with all your other external files. So how could someone improve this process if they'd like to? There are tools available, Insight being one of them, that allow you to utilize advanced spreadsheet functionality but control it uh, and centralize it in kind of a repository so that everyone knows where to gather that information and uh, interact with it. John Hilborn, do you think you could show me a little bit about what he's describing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think to reiterate kind of what John said is, you know, typically to get any kind of calculations like sum ifs or, or VLOOKUPs, any of that kind of stuff is, you know, everyone only knows to do that in Excel because that's the, the tool they're most familiar with and, you know, to be honest, is the most flexible. They're comparing that to their ERP system where they obviously can't do that within their ERP. So a tool like Insight where it helps is if you do any kind of modeling or or forecasting w with more than a simple one plus one, or if, you, if you're getting basically more complicated than that, you're going to probably want to utilize um, our modeling capabilities. So what I have on the screen here is it's somewhat of an elementary example, but the point being used here is is we're forecasting revenue, and all it really is is the number of units times the unit price to give us our, our revenue stream. So what an end user would do in a form like this is they would come into Insight, and they would hit enter budget mode here. And you can see the cells turn yellow, and that means that you're able to input actually directly into the cells. So I come in here, and I'm going to change this 2,000 to, let's, let's double it to 4,000. And I'll change this to, I don't know, cut it in half to 2,000. And I'll drop this down to, say, 5,000. The point being here is what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this apply model button here. And what Insight's going to do is it's going to push these drivers, so the 4,000, the 2,000, and the 5,000, um, into a model behind the scenes. Use all of that uh, functionality, like the calculations, like sum if, or, or do whatever the calculations are behind the scenes, and then pull the results back into our revenue numbers here. So, so you could possibly do it by region. You've got Denver on the left side, correct? Yeah, you, this is just one particular business unit. You could do this uh, across all business units consolidated. So after I've input my different drivers, I'm going to come up here and hit apply model. And I'm going to pick a model. And you may have multiple versions or multiple iterations you want to run on this form. But I'm going to apply this model. And what's going to happen here is Insight is going to push those drivers into a model behind the scenes, do all the calculations, and then pull the results back into those revenue numbers. And you're never actually going to see the model opened up, but Insight is pushing that information behind the scenes and pulling the results. So this screen kind of gives us, a, if I want to get into the nitty gritty of see exactly what happened, I could use this. But what I'll do is I'll hit close here and actually just see my results updated. So I'll exit enter budget mode. 
And I think what's important is that the drivers here are being keyed in directly into Insight, and, and they're always going to be viewable and stored here. So you're going to have a history forever of this information. If you ever need to go back to it and review it, it'll be there uh, when you need it, not in some offline spreadsheet. Yeah, so you can see here my revenue for period one updated. So this doubled up to six, uh, 600,000, 350,000, and 6.5 million. So typically most organizations will forecast revenue first, and then there's multiple expense accounts driven off revenue. And, and so you've got the drivers, and, and it's the, you know, you're, you're probably doing this in August, September, October uh, time frame, uh, and you, you run through the scenario and you complete your revenue stream. And what will occasionally happen is maybe at the end of your budget process, you'll get some revisions to it, and you'll want to make changes. So it's just as easy as opening this form and overriding those numbers and putting in your new assumptions and then pushing it through that model and getting the new results back all in an instant. So it's very easy to do changes. You don't need to go back into spreadsheets and, and redo everything. So pretend that you have a person in your business that you want to share this with, but they don't own Insight. How do you share this information with them? Maybe somebody in upper finance? or something? Yeah, I mean, uh, most people that would be involved in this process would likely have access to Insight. But ultimately, at the end of the day, if you want to have access for everyone, you can uh, automatically upload this information into JD Edwards, and then it's available over there to view, just like any other ledger. Okay, perfect. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I updated my revenue stream. Say I went through and I changed all my different drivers, I applied my model, and I'm happy with my new revenue numbers. I'm going to come over to this other form here. And this form, um, what's going on here is I'm going to hit refresh because I've updated those revenue numbers, so I'll hit so F5. This is kind of part two, then, of, of the budgeting or forecasting planning type scenario, right? We've got the revenue forecasted. Now we need to budget everything else. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you can see this, the 600000 350 and $6.5 million. This is the new revenue numbers, which I just updated in that other form. Now if I come down here, the green expense accounts, these are basically expense accounts that are a percent of revenue. So I have maintenance expenses, 10%, training, 25%, et cetera. And you know, it's pretty typical across the board. Usually you'll have you know, certain expense accounts that are just a percent of revenue. And then down below here, I call these our factored budget accounts. And basically what they are is they're pulling in information, actual information from the prior year and increasing or decreasing them by X percent. So this is going to stay the same as last year. This is going to be a 3% increase. Standard cost variances will be basically an 80% decrease. Physical inventory will double, et cetera. So what, what happens here uh, is the end user comes in here, and as opposed to budgeting each one of these individual accounts by period, they just change the drivers based on the new revenue stream and all their expense accounts update. Yeah, so if we kind of look at this from the old way of doing things, to achieve or accomplish what we're doing here, very quickly would require uh, multiple spreadsheets, right? You need to go get the prior year actuals, export those out, and then do some calculation to inflate that number to come up with next year's budget amount, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And within this, within Insight, built into this form is, is the actuals from prior year and is all those calculations. Right. So, and on the left here, um, you, know, you, you have to kind of use your imagination, but we have four different spread rules built into this form. You can have as many as you want, or, or maybe you guys just straight line everything. But for example, if there's a three in this cell, then this expense is going to be spread quarterly. Or if I put a one, then it'll be spread uh, straight line. So what, what I'm going to do here is just update my drivers based on the new revenue stream, and uh, we'll get new results. So I come up here, the end user would hit enter budget mode, and you can see the cells turn yellow, and they're going to come up here and just change. I'll change this maintenance. I'll bump it up to 50%. Yeah, so while you change those, I mean, you may want to change them, or maybe this is a second phase of your budget process, and you, you just went through revising your revenues, but all of your other factors and assumptions remain the same. All you need to do is open this form up, hit the refresh that will update your revenue, and then reapply the model like you're going to show here coming up, and in will come the new results all, all instantaneously. So, you know, from a, a forecasting perspective, tremendous amount of time is saved here. Yeah, so what it is, I just changed some of the different drivers. Obviously, it's arbitrary, but the point being is you can come in here, and, and as John said, you could, if your revenue just changed and all you want to do is hit refresh, it would update based on the new revenue, or if you want to change drivers, the end user would come in here change the percentages, come up to this Apply Model button, and I'm just going to pick the model I have associated with this form. 
And you can have multiple models associated with a form if you want to run different calculations behind the scenes. So hit open, come back to Insight, and you can see my results are updated. So how do you feel this helps you plan smarter? John, I'm going to let you take that one. <laughs> Very good. The key drivers are identified in this example as units. And so we forecasted our units, and from that, our revenue automatically generated itself. And then based on that revenue stream, we calculated automatically all the other costs, like the revenue-dependent maintenance that you see on the screen. And then in addition to that, at the same time, we are able to budget our expense accounts that aren't necessarily revenue-related, but they are all driven by prior year and some inflated factors. So we've identified all of our drivers put them in, recorded them, stored everything centrally, and then just rerun the, the same formula consistently because we're applying that model behind the scenes, and we know that nobody's going in there and changing it because they cannot once it's stored in the Insight repository. So there's a whole bunch of benefits. Hard to appreciate in this very short demonstration, but they're all there uh, and a significant value. Got it. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for illustrating that for me. I appreciate both your time. John Hilborn, John Lovar. We'll Signing see you off. around next time. Thanks, guys. This concludes the podcast. Please stay tuned to the follow-up sessions. To learn more, visit insightsoftware.com forward slash budgeting.